everybody it's mayor jane for another afternoon update thank you all for tuning in and make sure you tell all your friends to tune in as well uh, today we have gina grimes our extraordinary city attorney here and she's going to uh, talk about the governor's um, stay at home or safer at home order and the differences which are minimal to say the least with with ours I may have just stolen her thunder. But yeah, you did. That's all right. Well, <laughs> you want to go? No, just kidding. <laughs> You're stuck now. Uh, just to give you the cases updates, there's 440 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Hillsborough County, including 69 hospitalizations, and the uh, deaths remain at five. Uh, the COVID-19 testing site is uh, at Raymond James Stadium. It's going to be closed this weekend. Going to reopen Monday morning at 8 a.m., Again, anyone that it's, is experiencing symptoms can call 813-272-5900 and you will be triaged. You'll be asked a series of questions and then if um, you're within those parameters, they will give you uh, information to go and be tested at the Raymond James uh, site. So make sure that you do that. Again, the number is 813-272-5900. Make sure you call. We're, we're finally getting those collection kits uh, in at a, a reasonable number, not nearly what we need, but reasonable number. I want to take a few minutes just to recap uh, this week and the guests that we had. We had um, some incredible guests uh, the last three days. Dr. Lockwood, who is the Dean of the USF Mersani College of Medicine, and uh, he was here basically giving us a brief explanation of COVID-19. And I'll have to have all of you watch the video because although I may look like one, I am not a doctor, I'm just the mayor. So uh, his program was fascinating and you can um, go back and see that. He also underscored the importance of the physical distancing and the hand washing and the disinfecting, but really that personal distancing, staying uh, a minimum of six, six feet away from other individuals is really what is going to stop the spread of this virus. And as you've heard me say over and over and over, the, the danger of this virus is more so in the ease with which it is spread and the silence of, of that spread because a lot of people that have the virus don't even know they have it. And so they can be out uh, spreading that around. So I just can't, I just can't um, emphasize that enough, the physical distancing. Everyone needs to understand 
the significance of this and your personal responsibility in this as well. The uh, testing procedures, he talked about uh, the collection kits and how they've actually developed the swabs in their 3D printing process over at USF. So that was just fascinating. The swab has not uh, been FDA approved yet, but they're, they're allowed to use it for Tampa General Hospital, which is the teaching hospital and the Veterans Administration. So that frees up some of the other swabs for our testing sites. He also talked a lot about the antibody testing and how important that will be, that um, we will be able to get that testing and we're supposed to take delivery, Hillsborough County is, delivery of a number of those antibody tests that will say in real time if you've actually had the virus and you've recovered from it. So that would allow you to go back out without fear of passing it on to someone else or um, contracting it again yourself because you'll be have uh, built up immunity to it. So very, very important. Talked about the flattening of the curve. We've all heard about that. And it takes a couple of weeks to have these safer at home orders in place and have everyone physically separated to be able to see the value of that, you know, what, what we've been able to do to reduce the, uh, the spread of the cases. Now, I don't want to get too deep into it, but the data with that is a little murky because it's difficult. We haven't been able to test enough people to get a, a real grasp on the, the cases that we have here in Hillsborough County, but we're doing the best we can with what we have right now. Uh, he talked about the anticipated timeline for the cresting of, of these uh, positive cases of coronavirus. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I am a realist and I just wanna give it to everybody straight that it's gonna to be towards the end of April, beginning of May, before we really start to go on to the downside of that curve. And that's all done on modeling that, you know, it has a plus or minus uh, error rate in there because nobody's been through this in this country to date. So we're, we're doing um, the best we can with that. And that there'll be a slight resurgence in the COVID uh, cases of COVID-19 in the fall but he anticipated that schools would be back open. I know that's a relief to all the parents. Schools would be back open and that we would be able to manage any outbreaks that we had. Um, we wouldn't have to go in the severe um, steps or measurements that are steps that we're taking right now. Uh, we wouldn't be back in that position. He said, just as, as I've said all along, is the best way to deal with this is to assume you have COVID-19, assume that you have the virus, and conduct yourself accordingly. That's the, the best path to take. Then we, we were lucky enough to have uh, Thomas Mance, who is the president and CEO of Feeding Tampa Bay, and he talked about all of the citizens that they feed in the entire Tampa Bay area and how the, the need for food right now has increased dramatically because we have so many people that, um, that are out of work unexpectedly. And he talked about their partnerships that they have with Metropolitan Ministries, Meals on Wheels, just a fascinating organization. They even uh, partnered with a group of young students who brought an idea to the mayor's office. They saw a waste of meals at um, a conference that they attended. And they were like, why would you throw that out when it can be used for other purposes? So they partnered with Feeding Tampa Bay and now they're able to get all of those unused meals at conferences and things like that and distribute to uh, those in need. So it was really fascinating. But what they need is they need donations and they need volunteers, so very important. And they have all of the, the safety procedures in place to ensure that if you volunteer, that you will be safe and that if you call them to get food assistance, that they have ways to deliver it that are um, safe as well. So that was a fascinating uh, conversation. And then yesterday we had my friend, Clara Reynolds, and she is the president and CEO of the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. And they do amazing um, work there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I've had a lot of firsthand experience with the Crisis Center as a police officer. 
They do all of the sexual battery examinations uh, for adults in, in Hillsborough County. Uh, they also have the crisis hotline and they help individuals that are suffering from, from any type of a personal crisis, you know, from individuals that are just having uh, experienced some difficult times in their life all the way up to individuals that are contemplating suicide. So they do some, some amazing things at the crisis center. One of the things that I actually learned I didn't know before, I thought that they had volunteers that were trained to answer the phones. And Clara said that everyone that they have answering the phones um, on the crisis hotline uh, has a four-year degree and goes through, in essence, a semester of <clears throat> training before they can ever answer the first phone call. So they have some incredibly experienced and dedicated individuals working at the crisis center. They also have the 211 line, and every social service in um, Hillsborough County in has to, or in the entire Bay Area, has to register with them. So if you call and you need assistance with food, they can connect you with Feeding Tampa Bay. If you need assistance in, in uh, you know, paying an electric bill or something along those lines, they can help you out in those instances as well. So they do uh, a lot of wonderful things there. They also have veterans that answer. They have a veterans hotline. So individuals that call that are having um, issues with uh, maybe post-traumatic stress, uh, they will actually talk to a veteran so they have that connection. And just this year, they started a first responders hotline as well. Not a lot of people know that more police officers die in the line of duty from suicide than, than they do from other causes. And so it's a, it's a wonderful service that that they provide. They also uh, work off of donations and they have a need for volunteers as well. So please, if you haven't been impacted by this virus financially or uh, physically as well, do what you can to help out these organizations and so many more in our community, either through donations or through uh, volunteering as well. Now, one of the things we're gonna go through <coughs> next week we're gonna have somebody here uh, to talk about small businesses, but I just wanna tell everyone that I know there's a lot of anxiety out there. Individuals have lost their jobs and a lot of the small businesses are suffering. Some have had to shut down restaurants, um, you know, those businesses where people come in close proximity, um, nail salons, uh, hairdressers, barbers, you know, there's a masseuse. There's a lot of, of businesses that you, may not think about that really had to close their doors and, um, and are, are suffering financially now. So we're gonna go over the uh, CARES and that's Cor Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. We love our acronyms in America. But it's for small businesses and they have a paycheck protection program. We actually were briefed on this program by both Congresswoman, Congresswoman Kathy Castor and uh, Senator Marco Rubio had a, a conference call with a number of, of mayors, but um, uh, Kathy Castor walked us through this as well. So you can go online and look up this CARES Act for Small Businesses, and they have a Paycheck Protection Program, and it really takes you step by step through the entire process. And then they also have the EIDL grants, and that is the Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan. And a lot of these programs are identified as loans, but if the funding is used as designated, then it turns into a grant. So there really is, it's a, a step-by-step, -step. I have the larger size because I'm old and I can't see, but it has the step-by-step -step processes, exactly what it does, how to apply, and when the funds will be uh, delivered. And I can, I can say in all my years of dealing with government bu bureaucracy, I really have never seen the release of funds as quickly as we have now. Now I know if they're not in your hands, that doesn't mean anything, but we're trying to get that funding out as quick as we can. And with that said, we're gonna have a big announcement uh, early next week we're gonna be partnering with the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay in the 211 system, and we are going to have uh, funds available for individuals who, who have 
uh, lost their jobs and are having difficulty with food and sheltering. Those are the two immediate needs. And by sheltering, I mean your rent and your mortgage. So we're gonna be helping individuals and small businesses. And we are putting the final touches on that program and we'll be announcing that um, next week. So there is help out there. There's a great deal of hope in these, these uncertain times. And so please, if you need help, reach out because uh, we are an incredibly close-knit community and it's gonna take each and every one of us working together to get through this crisis. And we will. I have no doubt that we are going to emerge on the other side stronger than, than we are today. So let's talk about um, the governor's stay-at-home order. And again, it started out with, um, what was it, for shelter in place. And then we sort of transitioned into stay at home. And now the majority of these orders are called safer at home. But really it's all the same in essence. We want you to stay home if at all possible. So Gina Grimes, what is the difference between the governor's order and, and our order? Well, going back to what you just mentioned, is um, it's been referred to as a stay at home order, safer at home, shelter in place. What's the difference between all of them? Nothing, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. So it's don't, don't get hung up on whether it's called safer at home or stay at home, it's all the same type of order. And about a week ago, last Thursday, uh, the emergency policy group of which you're a member um, adopted a safer at home order. Mm -hmm. And now just recently this week, on Wednesday, uh, Governor DeSantis issued also a safer at home order. They're essentially the same. So a lot of people have, have raised questions and issues and are concerned about how does this order impact me, the governor's mm -hmm. order impact me differently than the, than the Hillsborough County order. It really doesn't impact you any differently. What's, what's the overarching principle throughout all of these safer at home orders? What do mm -hmm. you always say? Stay at home. <laughs> Stay at home, right. When do you get to leave home? It's basically mm -hmm. the same under the governor's order as it, as it was under the county order. You need to stay at home, especially so under the governor's order if you're a senior or someone with an underlying medical condition. But you can leave home if you need to go to the grocery store, if you need to go to the doctors, if you wanna uh, take care of your pets, or if you wanna um, take part in recreational activities. You can leave home for any of those basic needs. But the underlying principle is you need to stay at home as much as possible. When else can you leave home? You can leave home if you perform a job that's called an essential service. In the Hillsborough County order, there was a list of the specific jobs that constituted mm -hmm. essential services. Under the governor's order, um, it's essentially the same. You have to refer to another document, but it's all basically the same types of positions, same types of jobs. And basically, um, those are the jobs like the healthcare industry, the construction industry, and then other jobs where you can perform your job function while still st staying s six feet away from someone. Mm -hmm. So another thing that the mayor has repeated over and over again, the overarching principle in all the stay at home orders is maintain social distancing. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. That's the one thing we all know is the best preventative measure. Sanitizing, um, on sanitizers on your hands, hands washing, and practice social distancing. So social, social distancing has been broadly defined as, or generally defined as, groups of less than 10 and everybody's staying six feet apart. And if you just apply that common sense rule, you, you really won't have any difficulty understanding what you have to do. Um, there is one distinction in the governor's order that was different from the, from the county order, and that is the governor expressly permitted um, uh, as an essential activity, something you could leave your home for is attending um, church or religious activities. And that's, um, that's not to say that you shouldn't at the same time practice social distancing if you do attend any kind of religi religious um, activity. If you're gonna go to in a, in a prayer group, it should be less than 10. You should stay six feet away. Um, con uh, gatherings of greater than 10 are, are, are not appropriate under the circumstances. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that, but it's basically everybody needs to develop a spirit of cooperation um, and, and understand for, uh, to put other people ahead of yourself in this instance, and that's the most important thing. You may not think you have 
um, coronavirus, but you may, and you may be subjecting somebody else to it. So mm -hmm. think about other people before you think about yourself, and that includes religious gatherings. Mm -hmm. If anywhere where you should be thinking about others before <laughs> yourself <laughs> right. is at a, at a religious gathering. So um, even though you have the right to participate in religious gatherings, the message is practice social distancing, mm -hmm. groups of less than 10 and six feet apart. Mm -hmm. So the governor's order really isn't any different. The main, main difference is it applies statewide now. So we don't just have a state home order in Hillsborough County, we have one statewide. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's good too because, um, you know, if we have our, our stay at home or our, our safer at home order here in Hillsborough County, Pinellas County has one, but uh, other counties <coughs> may not. So we come out from under ours and have, have, have uh, basically saved lives and reduced the number of cases and then we have individuals that commute into our Correct. city, we can be right back at square one with uh, the, the number of infections. And also, uh, I've talked to a lot of the, the um, religious faith-based leaders in our community, and the majority of them have some type of a social media delivery of their services, uh, whether it's Facebook Live or some other process by which uh, individuals who couldn't come to church for whatever reason, they were sick or injured, they could, they could participate in the, the services. And you know, we understand the significance. It's, it clearly is um, a need for your faith to attend these services, but it also is a social connection as well. So to be able to do that through a process like a Facebook Live or something along those lines um, isn't the same as being in person. But again, if we make these simple sacrifices now, we will save lives and we'll be able to recover as a community much quicker than we do now. My sister actually sent me a, a post and, and it said she'll probably uh, hit me in the head for, for not getting it correct, but it said uh, our churches are not closed they've just been deployed out into the community. So that's, um, you know, let, let's all focus on that distance separation. And again, no one's trying to stop anyone from uh, moving about. We want you to just be cautious about it and think about it before you go. I know that a lot of the, the uh, grocery stores are looking at delivery. And I even had a conversation with one of the executives at one of the larger uh, grocery store chains about the, the possibility of a partnership where we could pay for the delivery fee of, of groceries, or you can call ahead and do the online shopping, and then you just pull up into the parking lot and those groceries will be put into your trunk. So there's a lot of ways, innovative ways around uh, going out and coming in contact with individuals. So just be very cognizant of that. Same thing when it, when you're out exercising. Be very cognizant of, you know, that that passing of individuals. I know in some of the stores they've actually put down arrows so you can only go one way in the aisle so you're not having that. You know how that, the, be uh, the best cross. way to tell if you're 6 feet away, put out your arm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> 6 feet when arm to arm. There you go. Yeah. That's right. All right, good deal. So let's go into uh, some of the questions. Let's see, this is from <coughs> Charlene Lindsay on Facebook, and I think you've, you've already answered uh, this. Can you clarify the governor's order, particularly the portion pertaining to seniors? Uh, it says they must stay home. Does this mean no grocery shopping? Not all seniors have someone to shop. Also, senior is not defined as a particular age. Right. And I know we both had to check our driver's license right, to make sure we weren't <laughs> senior citizen, although I think we are. Yeah. Um, actually, the governor issued an order earlier um, in which he identified people 65 and older and, and people with underlying medical conditions. He urged them to stay at home. And one distinction that's been brought to everybody's attention with this more recent order is that in this order, he said senior citizens and people with underlying medical conditions shall stay at home. But does that mean they can't leave their homes and they can't go to the grocery store and they, they can't go to the doctors? Of course not, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that. The governor is doing all of this to protect people and to protect their health, so he's certainly not gonna tell senior citizens they have to stay shuttered in the house and that they can't leave to go to the store. So 
Some of this requires the application of just common sense. Uh, the order says they shall stay at home, but it also says all persons shall limit their movement to just leaving their homes to conduct essential activities, like going to the store, like going to the doctors, and then also to conduct s essential services, which are the certain job sectors that um, can, 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 can continue to, to um, be ongoing. Excellent. All right, the next one's actually from a friend of mine, um, Carolyn English Bacon off of Facebook. This, I get asked this question a lot. Will lawn services, outdoor construction, and all other outdoor services have to close their businesses? What about flower shops? Um, any business, including lawn care, pest care, um, any kind of trade where you can conduct your job, perform your job while maintaining six foot distance from any other person, you can continue to conduct that job. So, of course, somebody that's, that's um, mowing lawns or um, that's doing any kind of lawn care, exterminating, whatever, they can do that by themselves. Typically, they do it by themselves. So that job, they would not have to close their business. They would be able to go to work every day. Um, a flower shop, it would depend on whether or not there was that customer contact. If you can maintain that, that sort of business mm -hmm. and maintain the six-foot distance, then you can continue to, to, to be open and you can t continue to operate. And on the uh, dealing with construction, you know, we, we are just in um, a construction boom here in the city of Tampa with the, uh, the finish date. It usually isn't a numerical date. It just says Super Bowl on it, uh, which hopefully will, will be recovered by then. But to keep our construction ongoing, because the majority of it is outside, uh, we have put in... in um, uh, Carol Post, the head of our uh, Development and Economic Opportunity, has put together a very robust plan for the projects we have here in the city. There's actually 52 of those that are, are in the works right now. And we are hiring um, a medical personnel to basically go around to all of these sites and ensure that there is the, the distancing and then workers, uh, in some cases, the actual companies have hired their own medical personnel to assess, assess all workers before they come on the job site, to take their temperature, to ask them questions uh, about their health, to make sure that they're not coming onto the job, job site sick. And we've hired an individual that is gonna do the same thing and is gonna rove around um, to those, those different projects to ensure that everybody's following the rules so that they can continue with this construction. One, it's, it's um, really vital to our economy and you think of the thousands of jobs that, that uh, we have here right now that are associated to construction. But also, don't want to bring up another downer, but we're not far from hurricane season. That's right around the corner. And so we've got to get a lot of these buildings dried in before the, the uh, hurricane season comes along so that they won't be um, a danger to our community. So that's a great program that, that uh, Carol Post has developed and has rolled out as well. So let's see. Oh, we already have, that was, um, Gina Freistack from Facebook also asked the same thing. Can construction sites such as residential build-outs continue? Again, if they're six feet, that's the way that I explain it because you can ask a million different questions about a million different tasks or, or services that are provided. And really the easiest way to address it is that if you can practice that six foot or more physical distancing while you're providing that service, doing that task, then you're okay. And in most cases, there's exceptions to everything. Clearly in the um, healthcare. He healthcare field, you know, doctors aren't hopefully not gonna treat you from six feet away. So there are exceptions <coughs> to that uh, essential service rule. So do we have um, other questions? Yeah, we have one more question from Facebook. Is there any chance that we could possibly be under a two week mandatory quarantine? Well, this changes day to day. You know, if you asked me two weeks ago, would we be where we're at right now, I, I wouldn't have thought that we would be here. So I can't answer that. Uh, I think that we're doing a very good job with what we're doing right now. But if you look at some of the other cities that are ahead of us, New York, uh, Miami is gonna have, you know, a, a, 
increase, dramatic increase in, in their number of positive uh, cases. You know, they're densely populated like we are, but we don't have the mass transit. I think as I said last week, that's something that uh, in my position as mayor, I have promised that, you know, we're gonna have mass transit here. This is the only time it's, it's been a positive that we don't have it because that's been an area where there's been a lot of, of um, transmission of this virus. And so uh, I don't know if we're, what we're gonna do, if we're gonna have to have more stringent restrictions or what we're doing right now is enough. So we will find out. All right, if that's the end of the questions, I got a couple of other things. First of all, we're gonna, I talked about our big announcement with the individual and small business relief, and we're gonna have a fund put together. We'll announce that next week. And then we're gonna have some fun events. We are partnering with iHeartRadio, and we are gonna have some great fun things for you to do while you're cooped up in your houses uh, next week. So that's gonna be very exciting too. And I must say, I'm not one to gossip, so you didn't hear it from me, but apparently somebody found, um, saw Tom Brady working out in a city park today. So he's here, people, he's here. And then a couple of people asked me about Dessa the dog and if she was quarantined. She has not been quarantined and she has still come to work every day, although she gets up in the chair and falls asleep because she's so bored. But Dessa is doing very, very well, and she is still sweet, and she's still running the office down here at City Hall. So again, please, everyone, we, are, we have the honor of living in the greatest city in the nation. And so what we need to do in this instance right now is we all have to understand and undertake our personal responsibility to stay away from each other and to do all that we can to ensure that this virus is not spread to our fellow citizens. So do what we can to flatten that curve, and we're gonna do everything that we can to make kindness more contagious than this virus, all right? Remember, be kind, and above all else, stay home. Thank you all for watching. Oh, yes.